This piece of land used to be used for storage and it floods when it rains. <coughs> These peacekeepers have been sent to help people move. This is my house. The UN is trying to get them to relocate to another base on higher ground. Uh, David Lamb here. is one of the few people who've uh, agreed to move. We have been sleeping under water, uh, no good sleep. We are almost having uh, something like three days on the water. This area was never intended for people to live on. It's part of the administrative base for the UN mission and was already home to thousands of UN staff and peacekeepers. Now it has to accommodate an extra 21,000 people in the part of the base that's prone to flooding. But the UN mission had no way of knowing back in December, when the fighting started, that the people seeking their protection would decide to stay indefinitely. At the time when we opened uh, the gates, we thought it would be a replica of uh, similar situations that we have seen in South Sudan previously. We've usually had them for, uh, under our protection for a few days. Uh, and then when things calmed down and people felt safer, they would uh, return to their homes. Now that the people are living here, the UN can't force them to move. Any relocation has to be voluntary. But even though this place is very unsuitable, most of the people living here just don't want to leave. The existence of the camps has put the UN at odds with the government. After fighting started in December, people crowded through the gates of the UN compound. The government believes former combatants are among the civilians. There are soldiers who participated in the, coup, in the attempted coup. And after failing, they ran into Unimis camps. Those who are in the Unimis camps, among them are people carrying arms. The UN denies the people in the camps have weapons. But the decision taken in the heat of the moment will have long-term repercussions here and in peacekeeping missions around the world. Anna Cavell Al Jazeera, Juba, South Sudan.